Hello and welcome to season three of Vet Academy. We are so glad to have you tuning in with us again. Have you ever wondered when pulling into a gas station to fuel up your car, how they have evolved over time? Maybe you have, but more than likely you haven't. Well, nowadays, filling up your car is a practical or mundane kind of task. 100 years ago, however, filling up a vehicle with gas was a bit of a different kind of experience. Today, let's take a step back in time to discover the history behind service stations and how they have evolved over time to what we see today. This episode of Academy is generously supported by National Corvette Museum lifetime members, Glenn and Andrea Johnson. Glenn is also past chair of the NCM Board of Directors, and the couple also serve as master ambassadors to the Tri-City Corvette Club of Southeast Texas. Gasoline, it's what we have been powering our vehicles with for generations. Gasoline has been around since before the invention of the internal combustion engine in the late 1800s. It was originally considered an unnecessary byproduct of the refining of crude oil used to make kerosene, the typical fuel used in lamps at the time and most often discarded. Over time, it was discovered that gasoline's ability to vaporize at low temperatures actually made it a useful fuel for many machines. By 1900, there were about 4,000 cars in the United States, a tiny number compared to the millions of horses still being used for transportation. Before the era of the Model T began in 1908, gasoline-fueled vehicles had some competition from steam-driven and electric cars. In fact, only about 1,000 cars had internal combustion engines. Another thousand were electric using rechargeable batteries and close to half of the 4,000 cars were steam driven. Eventually, people learned that gas powered cars were easy to refuel and eventually quicker to start. Steam cars became much less popular as technology advanced and within 20 years, the production of electric vehicles had paused as well. In those early days, motors would take empty five-gallon buckets or other measurable containers to places like general stores, garages, pharmacies, or even blacksmiths to fill them up with gasoline for their vehicle's use. At times, gasoline was even sold from push carts equipped with hoses. It was a familiar, simple process and a similar way kerosene was purchased for lamps. Containers were filled from a large storage tank at the site, and because the size of the refillable vessel was already known, there was no need for a measuring device on the tank to know how much was dispensed. Places that sold gasoline came to be known to motorists as filling stations. Where and when the first gas station appeared is difficult to pin down, since many of these stations popped up around the country between 1905 and 1913. A few locations around the United States claim to be the site of the country's first gasoline station. In 1905, the first dedicated gas station was established in St. Louis, Missouri. It was considered the world's first purpose-built gas station. Some claim that Standard Oil Company's head of sales, John McLean, came up with a new way to sell gas with the world's first service station. Opened in Seattle, Washington in 1907, McLean had purchased property next to the standard main depot. He had a pipe constructed that ran from the main storage tank to a 30 gallon, six foot high galvanized tank. On the tank was a glass gauge and a valve with a hose so that the gasoline could be pumped directly into vehicles on site. Others believe that the Gulf Refining Company opened America's first true drive-in service station in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1913. Unlike simple curbside gasoline filling stations, an architect purposefully designed the Pagoda-style brick facility. In addition to fuel, the station offered free air for filling tires, tire and tube installation, water, and more. 
known as the oldest still existing service station in the U.S., is Rygerd's gas station. It opened in Altoona, Pennsylvania back in 1909 and has been in the same location for 113 years. Rygerd's was originally a blacksmith shop, but when the Model T came along, they decided to make a change and operate only as a gas station. Its location alongside a railroad line was an easy route for gasoline deliveries by rail. Nowadays, Rygerd's continues to be a full service station. Attendants come out to not only pump your gas, but also to clean the windshield and check fluids and tire pressure. Over the past several decades, a shift has occurred where most gas stations have moved away from servicing cars to providing more conveniences for the people who drive them. Beginning in the 1980s, many stations began closing up the service bays in favor of remodeling the space to provide travelers with a much wider range of snacks and drinks. Today, some gas stations have even developed into fun pit stop destinations for travelers. New Jersey is the last state in the country that is still full service, meaning that legally you cannot pump your own gas in that state. What do you remember about stopping at the gas station when you were young? Since 1981, we know that every Corvette has been produced at the General Motors Bowling Green Assembly Plant. And since 1993, Mobile One motor oil has been the factory fill and recommended service fill in about 780,000 Corvette engines. When the Corvette racing team began developing in the late 1990s under the management of Doug Feehan, himself a former racer, as well as a 2020 Corvette Hall of Fame inductee, Mobile One Advanced Synthetic Oil was the top choice as the team's engine lubricant. The National Corvette Museum recently celebrated its decades-long partnership with the Mobile One brand by unveiling a custom livery, or design, for the museum's 2021 C8 Arctic White Stingray Convertible. It features the Mobile One logo in the same places as the Corvette racing cars on track. Throughout the year, the car is not only on display at the museum and at the NCM Motorsports Park, but it also takes part in many Corvette-related events across the country with our Museum in Motion program.